avicularia I do have in my collection. Now just a brief moment to talk about enclosures for my avicularia or avicularia related species I keep in my collection. So for the most part I tend to grow uh, them in these plastic boxes. Um, we don't have this nice uh, acrylic see-through. We don't have these nice acrylic see-through boxes uh, here in Europe. So if you're from the US, make sure you maybe get the one more see-through one so you can enjoy uh, the specimen more you, you actually got in your collection. Um, make sure that everything you put in this very enclosure uh, makes to yeah, join the, the upper part of the enclosure since they will web on the very top end and make their webbings with all the incorporated sticks and leaf litter they have and, and put it on on the very ceiling of the enclosure so that's it for now it's just a small advice and uh, don't use any terrestrial enclosure here Just a short reminder to like the video and ideally leave a comment down below that let us know which tarantula you actually like feeding the most, which has the best feeding response in your collection. Would be nice to know and maybe we have the same species and can actually document them for you on this channel. So enjoy watching the clip and yeah, listen to some music. So continuing with the specimens we tried to feed today is this uh, small juvenile Chromatopelma tianopubescens specimen, the GBB tarantula you call them in the US. They are from a small deserted peninsula in Venezuela itself, so they have quite a unique habitat. Uh, they are in a very desert-like environment, uh, there is not a lot of rain and they do inhabit uh, these uh, different cacti there and they live actually more of a terrestrial lifestyle and are not arboreal by any means but they do web quite a lot so if you have any structures you can just put them in the enclosure and they will web everything up just in like this little sequence but as you can see if the spiders are fed very well and their abdomen size is more than 1 uh, to 1.5 times uh, the carapace proportion then you better not feed them so what i do here is just try give them a cricket and if she's not actually eating it get the cricket out of the enclosure again so there will be no problems and no potential risk that the cricket will eat or yeah destroy the tarantula when she is in the molting process so just keep that in mind and remove all the crickets uh, from your enclosure since they're not feeding on them. So the next one in the list we're going to feed is this Ewatlos species from Chile. I got this as a adult female like one year ago and now the specimen molted and it's an adult male. So this Parafusa scrofa or Ewatlos species from Chile is impossible to tell which species they really belong to 
So we just try and find now um, some siblings from the specimen. They were bred back in 2011, 2012, uh, once or twice in Europe by accident. So I still have hope uh, that some of the siblings will be remaining in one of the collections. So I try to find a female. If it's working out, uh, we try uh, in the future, of course, to pair them and let have a look on, on how this actually will work out. Um, it's a very unclear specimen and species to tell apart, so there will be no introduction back into the hobby process, even though we will be able to breed them and get a potential uh, healthy XX with spiderlings. We just don't know if they will be hybrids or not, so we'll just keep some of us, uh, some of them for us, and we'll not introduce them back in the hobby. Nevertheless, an extremely nice uh, tarantula species. And if you're more into uh, the Chilean tarantulas, just make sure that you may head over to our playlist of the best of Chile tarantulas we found in Chile in the field, documented several different tarantulas in the field. And if you are just like us who can't travel and, and are quite sad about this fact that we can't travel at the moment, of course, um, just watch the videos and enjoy some spare minutes uh, abroad even if it's just digitally. Coming up next is our adult female Lasiodora Klugai. You have seen her various times on this very channel, but maybe not with a sequence like that. It's an old female, uh, over 15 years old and just huge in size. Um, she will not be bred anytime soon. We will remain this old lady um, just safely. She can just enjoy her bioactive enclosure with all these plants and leaf litter. And in the end, you see her feeding response is still the same, even though they are quite slow at this age and are not very uh, interactive or fierce tarantulas, just maybe as the younger uh, Lasiodora specimens are, there is no need to think that they can't uh, really like defend themselves when get disturbed, as you see on this feeding response. So always be cautious when feeding them. And these two crickets really did not get any chance. Coming up next is this Pamphobitius species called Costa from Ecuador. And as with many Pamphobitius species, um, there is a huge potential problem that a lot of different populations entered the hobby um, independently from various different collectors all over the place and all over time. 
so it's not really known which of these species uh, and population actually belongs together so we got this as pamphletius species costa potentially from ecuador uh, these specimens have these christmas tree pattern unlike the highland variants of pamphletius like the pamphletius ultramarinus so this costa species certainly belongs to a different species groups within uh, the genus Pamphobiteus with the Christmas tree pattern and they are more prone to live on the coastal regions of Ecuador and Peru. So Pamphobiteus costa, really nice looking tarantula. Uh, they have these amazing stripes of uh, violet purple coloration all over their body. So this is a female, it's still of young age, so she will grow a bit bigger and also the coloration will change for sure. In the end it will be more or less a brown specimen nevertheless when they molt and they're freshly molted they have a huge dark a very dark brownish tone to it uh, almost completely yeah darkish uh, black darkish looking so quite sure they will be amazing um, but we potentially can't really breed them unless someone has a major male uh, to offer in the near future who trade under the very same name so always be cautious uh, about people who maybe just yeah rename their specimens on their own because they think their specimen looks like something they've just seen on facebook so always ask the seller where they get the specimen from under what name they got it from and most of the people are honest so if you ask them um, i often had the times that they claim that yeah well i got this species under a different name but i thought it's looking like this so i just renamed it myself and uh, yeah that's basically part of the the whole problem but in the end i most of the time found uh, very honest sellers and i just have them the information for myself that this species originally was traded under a different name so i have the the better chance to find a counterpart uh, to potentially breed them so but as the same with these avicularia we have in the hobby i most of the time don't really breed these um, species where we don't know uh, about the origin from where we don't know about uh, where they originated from originally
Last and least, the Brachypel Mahamori we have in our collection. So a very nice female, still a young female, so I hope she will be with us for quite some time. Um, but yeah, she's well fed and not that hungry as you see in the upcoming clip. Uh, nevertheless, Brachypel Mahamori always go with captive bred specimens and now legally exported ones from Mexico. So this will be the best bet that you first of all get healthy specimens and second of all you really support uh, the, the, the legal trade and the effort these uh, people did in the past to like legally export and breed them within Mexico and then legally export them to various different countries around the globe. So an important statement to make, just get captive bred specimens uh, if you can. And if you can't, make sure that, yeah, they're not from any wild caught source. There is really no need uh, for it at this state. So thank you guys for watching this very different video where we showcase one of the few tarantulas we got in our collections in a more cinematographic way. Uh, we still try to improve our video skills. So once we're in the field, of course, we'll try and best uh, document these tarantulas in nature. So make sure you like the video, that would mean a lot to us. And if you enjoy various different videos, maybe even subscribe to the channel. Um, thanks for that and uh, see you guys in the next episode.